Are we on? We could just do the Joe, Joe Rogan thing. Are we? Are we rolling? Are we rolling? Are we ready? Are you there? Is it go- okay? We're live. <laughs> there we go. Welcome to the inaugural podcast of the Dude Cast. Good to see you, man. It's it's actually been a long time. It um, has since we've sat down at the yep. table and done a podcast. I Absolutely, mean, we, we've done podcasts before. Yeah. Uh, not this show in particular. Nope. This is something brand, brand new yeah. that you put out there. Uh, it's got to be a few months ago now. I think it's a couple months ago. I think yeah. it was before you even went to Malaysia. So yeah. uh, you were maybe even still planning. But yeah, put it out there. And I just, I wanted to do a dude, a man show, really. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, that's kind of copyrighted and trademarked. Yeah. So, you know, what, what could I think those do? guys are past the man show now. Like I they're, think they're, so. They're a little bit more into their career. It's Absolutely. not quite, you know, the cable show that it once was. For sure. Ladies and beers and trampolines, I, I right? I love ladies and beers and trampolines. <laughs> no, that's good stuff. Um, <laughs> but I figured I could probably introduce myself. So I'm Nick. Yep. And I'm JD. Yeah. So. Um, and this is the dude cast. We're yeah. going to get together, uh, probably put out one of these a week. That would be good. And uh, talk about. Dude stuff, guy yeah, stuff, guy things stuff as it pertains to life as a man in 2000 aughts. Yeah. 18. We're, te- we're teens. We're almost the end of that now, though, yeah. getting into 2020 here soon. I mean, another yeah, unless, year, but yeah, it's well, almost 2019 and then it's, it's into the twenties and it's, it's, it's crazy when you think about it, yeah. especially in my case. I mean, yeah. I'm a, I'm a Gen Xer. Uh, yeah. You're a Gen Xer as well. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's been it's been an interesting ride. A lot has changed. Over, it has. You know. Although, interestingly enough, apparently I'm no longer considered a Gen Xer. They broke it up a little bit. Oh, you're so that. So I'm now a uh, Gen Z, I think they call it. Okay. So from like 78 to 84, it's weird because generally generations run in like 10 yeah. year blocks. But they said, well, there's this there's this weird little group that kind of came at the tail end of Gen X. Yeah. But they're really before the millennials. Right. So they're like, yeah, it's like 78 to 84. Some say 76 to 82, something right. like that. Um, I don't know. It's definitely like I came before the Internet and I always joke about this with my wife. I say I have pre Google brain. Right. You know, we're out and about and looking for something. And I think, gee, I wish I knew XYZ. She's like, Nick, look in your pocket. Yeah. Like, Oh yeah, that's right. I have this phone. I have the repository of all human <laughs> knowledge and I forget to look at things, but you know, sometimes it's better not knowing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, the internet is, is kind of the biggest thing that happened. The biggest change for me. Right. I mean, there was no internet for a long, long time. Well into my, you know, I think it started happening in my mid twenties Right, is, is when it sort of came about. I mean, before that it was all pagers and cell phones. So, I mean, like really back backwards. And in fact, for a lot of that, no cell phones, just pagers, you mm-hmm. know, and you'd go find a pay phone and you'd, you'd make your calls. So having that information at your fingertips, uh, you know, it definitely changed things and social media absolutely changed everything you yeah. know, in a lot of ways, uh, some good and some not so good. And uh, for people that are listening, you know, Nick just recently kind of swore off Facebook. Yeah, absolutely. That, that was a great segue. It's, it's almost like you've done this before. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, as of I officially a month ago, um, t- uh, yesterday was a month. And I gave myself and I gave my friends and family a, a notice of, of one month saying, hey, listen, I'm leaving Facebook. I'm done with it. Um, and that's kind of what we're, we're talking a little bit about, about social media, or I like to call it the anti-social yeah. media. But um, yeah, I gave, I gave people about a, a month's notice to say, hey, I'm leaving. If you want to stay in touch with me, make sure I have your, you know, your phone number, your email. Obviously, really close family and friends. You're always going to have that right. information anyway. Right. But it's the sort of the peripheral friends, you know, that, that beyond the 30, I think, you know, most people say they have somewhere between 10 and 30 really close friends. And then beyond that, it's mostly acquaintances. So, you know, there's people that I'm in touch with, or I was in touch with, you know, from high school that I've not seen in 20, 25 years. Um, and a few of them reached out and said, here's my, here's my number, here's my mailing address, that kind of thing. But the kind of, which is really cool. Yeah. You know, because I think the vast majority of people, I mean, I have people on from high school and we don't really communicate and you're just kind of there. And I'm pretty sure that people are just creeping each other's profiles. Like where, <laughs> right? where did that guy, where did that guy end up? Like where we were pretty we... sure he was going to end up in jail, Yeah, but he hasn't quite made it yet. So we got to keep on following this really close because we know at some point he's making the news, you know, yeah. or, you know, 
Or it's that comparison, that life comparison. I mm. mean, because really when you start off in high school and, you know, junior high and depending on how long you've had these friends, because some people I know had, you know, friends from all the way from, you know, elementary school all the way through, you know, college and university and yep. remained friends and then drift apart after that, you know, it depends. Like the, when you start at the same age, you know, you live in the same neighborhood, you kind of always wonder where people end up. And, yeah. you know, for some people, you know, that uh, adage of keeping up with the Joneses, that's part of that, right? Yeah. And I think that's part of the, the toxic part of uh, social media as well. 100%. Is that it makes you feel bad when you see people who on the outside are successful. And, and yep. I'll air quote that for, for people that are listening because a lot of times I don't think. Uh, what people are putting forward on social media is, is in fact, anywhere close to the reality. 100%. Like, well, and, and I think people forget that. And, and like, like you said, they're not, or maybe not even aware yeah. in the first place. Because so much of, and I, I, I think Facebook maybe a little bit less so than the, the more instantaneous, like the Instagrams right. or the Snapchats or the, I don't know, there's a gazillion of them now, but where it's like those, those perfect posed pictures or whatever. But you're finding it's, I'm fine, I found, that it's creeping over into Facebook right? where people are curating these beautiful pictures of them and their family or they and their Lamborghini or whatever right. it happens to be. And it's like this weird fake persona that they're putting out for some reason. Yeah. Why? Yeah. And then, like you said, you feel bad because it's like, oh, well, I went to school with ex this person. They're driving a, a, a Bentley and I've still just got my beatbox like what you know what right beater so you end up feeling bad and and it's and it's this this fake thing that doesn't exist and it's like why are you why do you feel the the need to do that yeah. and, and that affects your life I, yeah. I think a lot of people don't realize how much that does really affect your life i mean if you are constantly bombarded and everybody you know on facebook is driving a lambo yeah. and you're driving your beater you do start to feel bad about yourself yeah and in reality you have no reason to do so yeah, uh, you know it's it's kind of crazy to me, you know how much that happens, and definitely what, what you're saying in the sense with Facebook, because Facebook keeps on expanding their platform. Right. Uh, you know, social media is kind of in that age where it's we need to keep you on our platform. You know, yeah. it used to be a time where you'd go on there, you'd post things, you'd go and you'd bounce all over the internet, and that was great. Yeah. You go look at this post or that post, but now you know with algorithms and how they you know curate. They want to keep you on the site. They want to keep you on the site, absolutely. You know? And you know, it's it's funny because there used to be a time where you could go to an internet site. So going a little bit later than you know ICQ or uh, BBS yeah. systems, but internet forums. Yeah. So if you had an interest, let's say in bicycling, mountain biking, yeah, you could go to pink www. Bike. Pink bike, yeah, there you go. It's a perfect example. Um, or for m musicians, you know, it was um, sevenstring.org or yeah. guitar dot com or whatever it happened to be and there would be a forum of like-minded people that all liked that same hobby and interest and it wasn't just this whizzing feed of information that's never stopping right that some computer is trying to decide what they're going to show you it was actually divided into topics and you could say yeah i want to look at technique stuff today i'll click on that or yeah. you know bikes i want to look at uh tire chain upgrades or whatever yeah. so you could actually and, see. and the newest was always first right yeah. You know. But the interesting thing about the curation on those forums is that there was actually a human behind it. Yeah. Because they wouldn't necessarily curate and take things away or add things for what they would think people would want. It was actually more of a moderation to make sure that people were right. being relatively civil, that you know people weren't spamming with advertisements yeah. to buy XYZ product and these sorts of things. And I think Facebook lacks that. Right. You know, and and the the biggest problem is that you can't control what you see yeah you can go in and click oh i don't want to see that but that's after the fact yeah and so much of my time was spent clicking i don't want to see this ad i don't want to see this ad i don't want to see that ad and especially in the past couple years it's been a lot of trump 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 right right and anti-political this and u.s politics that and i'm like i don't want to see this i don't want to see this right. and i ended up unfollowing probably half of my friends list yeah because I just all they were posting was this nonsense, because the algorithm rewards you based on how many clicks or reactions, and it, right. the algorithm doesn't care whether it's positive or negative. Yeah. So they're gonna reward your post by showing it to more people if more people are clicking on it, even if it's an angry, oh you're an idiot, I think you're stupid, Trump's an asshole, whatever. Yeah. 
and then they show it to more people. And those 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 threads, you know, those political threads tend to gain a lot of momentum yeah. because somebody will get their, you know, their nose out of joint. Somebody else will get their nose out of joint. They'll be coming from different angles. And then it's just post after post after yeah. post. And it'll be 30, 40, 50 posts. Right? You have to unfollow those posts. And yep. even after you do that, I, f- I found You'll, in my experience, it still comes up. It yeah. still throws it back in your face. It's like, why? I said I don't want to see this. Anymore. Yeah, right. And of course, I mean, those kinds of things would happen on forums in the old days. Sure, sure. But there were moderators that would step in and either close the thread yeah. or say, hey, guys, take this to private messaging enough with the yeah. public bashing of each other you know that sort of thing um you know was it a perfect system no yeah but the thing is is that if you were on you know six string dot org or if you were on pink bike that those trump discussions would they would either not be happening yeah or they would have an other thread that nobody ever looked at and (laughs) yeah an off topic section yeah an off topic and people would just go to town there and nobody cared because really nobody looked at it yeah so and so there's this there's this this negative feedback loop that happens i think with with social media basically because of the ai but then it's it's constantly prodding and poking you and you're getting this reward system it's like pavlov's dog yeah right where you're constantly looking to see if somebody's liked your post And then the things, unfortunately, that tend to get the most traction are those negative posts or those inflammatory posts or whatever it happens to be. So it sort of rewards you for putting that out. And then eventually over time, it trains you so that over a period of six months or a year or a year and a half or whatever, suddenly you're, you've turned into an internet troll and you didn't mean to be. Yeah. You know, I'm not saying that that's necessarily what happened to me, although I could see it happening a little bit. Um, And then the other thing is, I think because it's, it's training each individual to do that, to do that negative push all the time. Right. I think it makes your filter change. Yeah. The way you look at the world. I think it does that. And I think, I think it does some, uh, you know, I think it goes well beyond the internet as well. I think a lot of times it changes how people interact. It changes, you know, you are more likely to say something that you wouldn't say in person yeah. on the internet. hundred percent. Uh, and you know, Granted that a lot of people that you'll never see on the internet, but there are people that you're going to run into. And I mean, you know, one, one of those things, one of those adages that, that I've always lived by is I won't say anything to you that I wouldn't say directly to that person anyways. And I, I mean, I'm a fairly blunt, gruff person. And most yeah. people will tell you anyways. But I mean, I, if I'm not going to say it, you know, to you, I'm, I'm not going to put it out there. And yeah. I'm most definitely not going to, you know put it out on the internet and, you know, get into a big trash talking thing. Well, know. it's just nonsense. Right. Um, but yeah, there's, there's an interesting, so there's an interesting book and it, it came about because I was making the posts about leaving Facebook. Um, but there's a Silicon Valley guy, his name's, uh, Jaron Lanier. And he was one of the sort of the grandfathers of, uh, AR or VR. Right. Um, he developed a, a couple technologies he sold to like Microsoft. He sold to Google. He's, he's had several yeah. startups. So he's part of that Silicon Valley elite, yeah. but his bent as he's become older and a little bit more philosophical is sort of the destructive nature of AIs and the destructive nature of social media. Right. And he's got this book that came out last year and it's called, um, 10 arguments for deleting your social media accounts right now. Yeah. And in it, he makes some very, very amazing points. And one of it is like we've been talking about this sort of negative feedback loop of the yeah. AI making you and changing you into somebody that you're not necessarily are or want right. to be. Um, but there's also these, this whole other side of it too, that once you start learning about it, it blew my mind. I had no idea. So I don't know if you've ever gone into your security settings in Facebook or, yeah. and you've looked that you can actually pull from them. You can download a, your entire Facebook history. They've kept everything since yeah. day one. Even if you delete a post, it's still there. Yeah. Um, but you can also download your, uh, what do they call your advertiser program, your marketing profile. So you can see everybody that Facebook has sold your information to Yeah. without your permission. Well, they well, you have, have given their permission. Exactly. This is the kicker, right? But who reads end user license agreements? Right. And, and <laughs> that's and that's the interesting thing. Like, you know, 
earlier last year, I think there was the startup Vero. Uh, yes. They, they came up and they started going and they were getting some traction. They got some good traction. They had a, a nice little platform. It was based on cell phones. It was Instagram-y. Yeah, you could control who you posted to. It was linear. It, the, a bunch of things that I think they did right as far yeah. as social media platforms went. And then there was the negative backlash. And I think that's kind of what killed them ultimately. Mm. And it was all based around the user end agreement in the sense that they can do this with your photos and they can do that and they can do this with your information. And it's funny because people were so hell bent on that and they're on Facebook, you know, circulating this around. And I'm pretty sure Facebook just kind of sure, I'm sure the they, floodgates and yeah. like, it's like, let this go because this is going to, you know, really hurt them. Right. Because they don't have the, you know, capacity to sort of counteract that because right. They control Facebook, and Facebook is a direct competition to them. And ultimately, at the end of the day, you know, I, I think that uh, a lot of people that were arguing that case don't even realize that exactly what you say that you've already given Facebook permission, and a to lot of the things that they were complaining about, you've already signed away to Facebook, yep. because, and you know that because they're on Facebook, but they don't even look at that agreement. It's kind of like you know when you get the new software game, it's like agree, I yep. just want to play, just agree, I want to play, yeah. yeah. And so the interesting fallout though, so since it's been thirty days, so I've shut the account off, and the interesting. The kicker with the Facebook thing is you can tell them to delete your profile, but they actually don't. Right. So what they'll do the first 30 days is they basically turn your account silent. Yeah. So nobody can access it, but it's actually still there. Yeah. It's still live. It's still uh, active. But obviously you're not logging in, so you're not feeding new data to the platform. Then in month 60 or day 60 to day 90 is when they actually start going in and deleting right. material. So it's not for a full three months. Yeah when your Facebook account is finally gone. Yeah. And this is actually after the deletion process and you have to add, um, you have to send an email essentially to the support, support team. It's an auto generated right. thing, but you have to send this email saying, yes, I want to leave. And they have, they give you a click down, blah, blah, blah. And then they ask like, why? is there anything else and why and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, yeah. I don't feel like filling this out. Just delete my yeah. account. Um, but since I haven't logged in, so it, you know, when you have the Facebook app on your phone, yeah. you're also giving them permission to geotag you and right. see where you are. I've noticed my spam has dropped by 60% in a month. Nice. And it's weird because part of that list, I was on the list for Shaw GMC. I was on the list for Kia, for Hyundai, for like all the car manufacturers. Uh, car manufacturers. Well, the car manufacturers and car dealerships in yeah. Calgary, um, as well as Chinook Mall and um, uh, various other stores. But these people had bought my information yeah. and were actively advertising to me. And that stopped. The funny thing, as far as I understand, when you quit as well, mm. when they delete your stuff, they're not actually deleting anything. All they're deleting are some of basically your name. So your right. marker. They're keeping a lot of the other markers. Your well, age, your sex. You more know, than likely. They're, they're keeping those profiles, but your personal details, your, yep. your personal information, that's what gets going. You know, if you go in and you knew enough about Nick, you could probably still track down a lot of that information, but it's Perhaps. just not tagged. Perhaps, you know, with yeah. Your name. The 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 two sort of profile shutdown options is the one is basically turn off Facebook, and yeah. then the other one is delete. Yeah. From what I understand, and the wording in their sort of email form that I filled out was that this will be a permanent deletion of all of your data after ninety days. Yeah. Your your data, my data, your yeah. data. So, so it, it'll right. take it out. Be, yeah. yeah, they'll keep all of the other information. Yeah. It's just and you know that's part of that thing that you sign off on is yeah. like, yay, I want a free service. And I'm just going to give right. you all this stuff for free. And so it brings up an interesting point. Like, what is your personal data worth? Yeah. It's worth a lot. It's, it's worth, worth, it's a, worth a fortune. Obviously. I mean, Facebook's a billion dollar valuation. Yeah. Um, Vero, I don't know. I, are they still active or are they it, gone? Pretty it's, much? it's still there, but it's not. Right. It's, you know, it's flat. It's yeah. dead flat. But I mean, Google, multi-billion dollar yeah. company. Apple, billion dollar company. They're yeah. a little bit different because it's mostly like hardware stuff. But all of these companies have this data that they're mining and selling yeah. to various other companies for whatever, sometimes nefarious, sometimes just marketing, but whatever purpose you don't know. Yeah. But at the end of it, that data is worth something. Why aren't I getting a cut of it? Because you're getting the service for free. That's, that's the trade right. off, right? That's their trade off. So again, one of these, one of these things and, and, uh, in roundabout, if you, if you end up watching or seeing any of this Jordan, uh, Lanier stuff, it's interesting. <laughs> he kind of proposes like, why don't we have a social media that's truly social, number one, and number two, that you pay for, 
so that they don't have to mine your data and sell your data. Or you could opt into a revenue share model for your data. Yeah. You know, like what's my data worth? It's got to be worth something, you know? And so even if it's a couple hundred and depending on what site you go, you can start Googling. I went down this rabbit hole one night and I was up till about four in the morning. So I figured out that my personal data, depending on time of year, sort of the year and how much I travel and how much I buy and whatever else, but my personal data is worth somewhere between about 400 and about $3,000 per year. Right. In terms of like a marketing value, if you will. So, you know, why not that, why not that split? Like, why can't I have half of that or 90% of it? You know, cause if you're looking yeah. at a giant company aggregate over millions of users, if they're only making a couple hundred bucks per person, that's still huge money. Yeah. You know, it's, it, it, it's crazy to me, but we need something to drastically shift in the market before, before this kind of thing's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and I don't know if that ever will because the natural state of social media now, and, and we've seen it already happen several times is that the bigger players are going to eat the smaller players and that anytime a smaller player gets to a point where they're going to be a problem for that platform, they either, like Vero, help themselves implode or <laughs> like Instagram, right. buy them, Yeah. right? So Facebook bought Instagram. Instagram was getting to a point where Facebook's like, okay, this is getting too big yep. and we don't have any yep. control and you know it's taking away our users. People prefer it over our platform. Yep. So what's the solution? We buy it. Yeah. You know, we've seen it, uh, you know, things like Snapchat. Mm-hmm. What, what did they do? Well, they didn't buy it. They just implemented the exact same process in Instagram. You know? Right. And actually, YouTube this past week just did the same thing that, you know, Snapchat and Instagram. Have. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, like I said, it's that fight to kind of keep you. Well, to keep you on the platform because we're trading in yeah. personal information and we're trading in, in attention yeah. now. And it, and that's the huge thing. And again, I mean, I look at it and it's like, okay, well, my, my personal data, my time has got to be worth something, even though I'm consuming. Um, but, you know, and it, it, it's interesting because people have asked me too, like, okay, well, you left Facebook, but what about YouTube? What about Twitter? What about whatever? I still feel like I have more control in those platforms. Right. Twitter, I've never been a huge user of anyway, so it's not really a big deal. I don't, I don't find that I waste a lot of time there. Um, but with YouTube, I still feel like it's, it's kind of like TV. Sure. They show me ads, but it's because I'm, I'm watching a program that I like, Yeah, you know, whether it's a a live pro podcast or if it's, you know, a a car review show or guitar review stuff or whatever. You never have to partake in the social aspect of YouTube. No. And you never have to like a post. You never have to, you know, comment on anything. You don't even have to sign in to utilize a platform. And that's the big thing. They don't yeah. even force you to sign in. Whereas yeah. if you try to watch a post on Facebook, it'll, it'll get you to sign in. Yeah. hundred you know? percent. So it's, you know, for that, that, that I get and that I understand. Like if you're not going to sign in, they're going to play ads. I mean, mm-hmm. that's all good. And I, and I mean, to be honest, the people that are using the platform, like people such as myself, who, you know, so, some people are getting paid, mm-hmm. you know, when, once you hit a certain level. Yeah. And that, and that's good. And that's, but again, that's not necessarily personal data. That's no, because it's no. a revenue sharing yeah. model. And, and that's an interesting way to look at it too. And I think they've maybe not a hundred percent solved the problem, but I think they're a lot further ahead than a Facebook. Right. right. I think they're pushing with two more towards a Facebook kind of platform. I think they want to because they want to keep people on that yeah. platform. You know, it's interesting that you mentioned if you don't log in, they do still capture IP data yeah. and what you watch. Oh, absolutely. They're still going to, you know, track that information. Yeah. But it, it's not, you know, uh, curated the way that if you are logged in. Correct. Yeah. When you're logged in, they're going to they're gonna try and feed you stuff that they yeah. think you're going to like and going to watch. And I mean, God forbid you click on a, you know, a, a Dr. Click Pimple plate. Popper. Yeah, something. And then suddenly <laughs> everything recommended for you is like skin tag removal yeah. and like zip. Watch us remove the sebaceous cyst. Yeah. It's just like, Ugh, no, thank you. I mean, it, you know, w- once when you watch it, but I don't want to spend yeah. my entire day on YouTube watching skin growths. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's nuts. You know, the other interesting thing that that's happened since this. So I've gotten uh, in touch via phone mail phone mail via phone yeah uh and via email and actual paper letters from some friends that i haven't heard of and heard from in years oh nice which is kind of nice so you know i'm i'm more relaxed because i'm not on the platform anymore and that was the other thing and i didn't realize until i stopped it was actually making me really anxious every day 
because I'd always want to check my phone. Has somebody looked on my post as my, right. as my post about, my, cause I, you know, you'd link yeah, YouTube stuff and you yeah. post it up. Has anybody new watched it? Have I got a like on it yet or whatever? And I was constantly feeling like I was missing out or I wasn't getting some information or my stuff wasn't getting to people. So I was always checking, always checking, always checking. It was this kind of point of contention between my wife and I yeah. where she's like, why are you on your phone all the time? And I'm like, oh, I'm just, you know, looking at Facebook or whatever. And she's like, yeah, but you're always on it. And I didn't realize until I stopped just how much anxiety and pressure I was putting on myself right. for no reason to look at this all the time. Yeah. It, it's crazy to me. It is. It is. But you don't realize until you're gone, you know, and, and if, I've said it for years, but I really feel like it now. It's like Facebook is the digital equivalent of going to the fridge and looking in it when you're bored. Yeah. Just to see if there's any new food that's appeared, which of course there isn't any because you haven't gone to the store. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's a, it's actually a very good analogy because I mean, ultimately that's that's what people are doing. You know, mm. that's why you see when people go on public transit, you know, everybody's glued to their phone or they're standing. It's it's that dead time in your life that people are yeah. filling. I mean, I, I I don't necessarily have a problem with that because no, I like for to sure. keep busy myself, and I'm one of those people that if I sit down and I watch TV for two minutes, it'll I'm turn into two hours. No, no, I just like, I, I got to do something. Oh, you get bored right? doing I, that I, I get, for sure. You know, it's like, okay, this, this, this is yeah. boring, right? I need that constant, you know, go, 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 go. Stimulation. Or constant changing or, all, yeah. you know, even when I work at my computer, I have like multiple monitors and I'm doing multiple things and, right. you know, answering the phone and doing this and, you know, music. And it's just, yeah. it's probably a little overwhelming for a lot of people Could how be, I yeah. probably operate, but, you know, that's just the way it is. So I, I don't mind filling the dead time. Mm. I think when it becomes a problem is that when, you and I are having a conversation in the podcast here and I'm just kind of like, Oh, that's really nice, Nick. Uh, and I pull out my phone right. and I start right in front of you, you know, yeah. instead of having that real interaction yeah. that I'm drawn to the point that I want to see, Hey, somebody like my post or yeah. somebody, you know, somebody sent me a message. That's where to me it becomes problematic because this is real. Yeah. Where that is, you know, I mean, there's, there's a reality to it as sure. well, but you you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, 700 of my closest non-friends might be sending <laughs> me a message. Right? Yeah. Right. So it's pretty wild. I, you know, so in the time now that I'm not wasting on Facebook, I'm, I'm reading more, yeah. which is nice. Um, practicing more music and writing more music. I'm more productive than I've been in months, yeah. which is awesome. Um, and my connection with my wife, my connection with my friends, my connections with my family, they're better right? because I'm taking the time to really interact with people, whether it's via phone or email or whatever. So, I mean, I realize that this is kind of an extreme thing and it's maybe not for everybody and some people can, or some people can, other people cannot, yeah. you know, unplug or whatever, but I've found that it's been really helpful I think me. the younger you are, the more difficult it will be. Probably, right? Right. I mean... Facebook never used to exist, yeah. you know, for me up until when did it start, you know, like yeah, 2001, 2000, no, sorry, 2004, I think, yeah. right? You know, yeah. I lived well over half my life before yeah. Facebook even appeared. So, I mean, you know, for me, it's like, okay, if it comes, it goes, whatever. Right. Um, but if you are born after that point, or if you, you know, the, your first interactions are on Facebook and you got all your friends from school on Facebook and yep. it just continues to grow. I'm pretty sure that's harder to, it's harder kinda, to get away from. Yeah. Yeah. And it's insidious. You know, it's, it, it's funny because there's, I think I made a post in the, the YouTube creators forum before I was leaving. Cause I put, I made yeah. that video about like why I'm leaving Facebook yeah. or whatever. And uh, I had mentioned like, well, you know, I've, I've made this, I, I did, I made a forum. It's uh, Alberta, Alberta video creators dot forum motion dot CA in case anybody's interested and wants yeah. to go online. Um, but the comment, there was, there was one, I think the comment was yeah. something to the effect of, gee, that's funny. It sounds like Facebook. Yeah. It's not. This is coming from a 20-year-old, right? Yeah. Like, it's not the same thing at all. But that's the only thing that they've known. Yeah. The thing is with a, a forum, whether it's, you know, something like that you've set up, which is, you know, a, a lot of people that have been on like Nexopia or, you know, things like Pink Bike or, you know, six string four or dot org, you know, it's. It's going to be completely formed to them. Mm -hmm. Number one, it's going to be way too bland. Yeah. Like, because it's just words. Yeah. <laughs> there's no pictures, you know, there's no, yeah. you know, 
me sticking my feet out my tent, you know, taking a photograph of a mountain kind of For thing. For sure, you yeah. Know, and 600 other people that did the same thing. Yeah. It's just, you know, it's actual just conversation. And, yeah. and I think that's that makes it difficult for a lot of people. Well, they've, they've come a long way now, too. I mean, you can add GIFs. You can yeah. add photos. You can add audio files. Like, you know, the, so there's more. But you're right. It's a very different. Yeah. It's a completely It's still based platform. completely around text, right? I yeah. I mean, it's, you know, that's its primary kind of. Yeah. You know, and the other... Um, the other thought that I had regarding the whole sort of, you know, the, the change of it um, and whatnot. And I don't think, especially in this day and age, and it's, I think social media is partly to blame, but it's also, you know, television pushes it. And it's like, if you're told something enough, that's kind of eventually what you're yeah. going to turn out to be. It's like, um, if you read any self-help books, they talk about negative self-talk. Like, yeah. don't say, I can't do this or I can't do that. Make sure that you're saying, I can do this. I can achieve. I am good enough. I'm dark, you know, I'm smart enough and doggone it. People like me, yeah. but there is that, that positive reinforcement that you have to feed yourself. We don't spend enough time just being humans anymore. Right. Sitting and doing nothing and being quiet and thinking. Yeah. And that's scary to a lot of people. Yeah. Or we don't spend enough time being humans going out and interacting with other or humans. Or with other real, humans, yeah, absolutely. Real situations, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I don't even think anybody can really walk. I, I've noticed myself. I, I'm a person that I will go introduce myself. I'll go say hi. You know, I just have always done that. You had to do that back in the day to, you know, kind of make, you know, your introduction and, and do those. A lot of people are, you know, they have a hard time sort of, you know, making that walk, right? Yeah. Walk up to somebody they don't know, even if you are at an event that, you know, you're all sort of the same people and introducing themselves. It's uh, a lot of stuff becoming foreign to people. Yeah. You know, you know or you'll find, I, I find one of the weirdest things I found is like, hey, are you on Facebook? And like, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, what's your name? And it's like, they'll put you in and they'll walk off. Like, oh, yeah. okay. Like, that was weird. And then, you know, <laughs> two days later, you're getting messages. Hey, it was really cool meeting you. You know, like this, this, and these like, big, long paragraphs. Like, what's going on? Like, could have talked yeah while we were <laughs> yeah there live but it's it's just kind of weird interaction yeah. you know it's 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 changed a lot of things about how the world kind of works i think you know yeah it's, absolutely um the the biggest thing and like i said you know just sitting and being a human or sitting and not being stimulated i think is good for us again some people can do it some people can't but one of the things i've done recently too is get back to the gym and yeah. really been working at it like i'm, I'm going diligently and I've, I've got a diet program i'm doing it blah blah we yeah. can talk about that in another podcast but um one of the things that i'm very specific to do is i leave my phone at home when i go to the gym yeah because my gym time is my gym time yeah. I want to make sure I'm focused on my training. And I see so many people sitting around on their phone, yeah. sitting on a machine that I want to use. And I'm like, hello, hello. Hey, yeah. can I work in? And they're just like zoned out. Drives yeah. me bananas, but that's for another day. Yeah. So here ends episode one of the dude cast. <laughs> here you go. It was great sitting down with you. We'll yeah, it was great sitting down with you this too. On an ongoing basis. For sure. Awesome. So that's the inaugural episode of the dude cast. Uh, make sure to check us out. We will be on iTunes, Google Play, and a few other places. Spotify, Yes yeah. FM, I don't know. Who knows? iHeartRadio, who knows where yeah, we're right? going to be. So uh, definitely check us out. Uh, share us about, uh, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs>